Hey everyone, we've got a great topic for you today. I am going to piggyback the capital gains video that I did a couple of weeks ago, and we're gonna flow that right into cryptocurrencies. There's been a, a ton of questions that I've been getting from uh, clients and friends about crypto. There's obviously a huge influx of participation, uh, but with that comes potential taxes, right? So I have, uh, I did the video, I got a lot of feedback, and people are wondering about the crypto aspect of it. So. I just want to touch on that briefly here in this video. Before we get started, I would super appreciate everybody to aggressively hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for all of the updates and notifications. All right, so let's talk more about crypto, Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera, and the capital gains, how does it work? Well, the IRS has designated cryptocurrencies as property. That is similar to your house or your stocks, stocks in your portfolio. Just like stocks, cryptocurrencies fall into the short and long-term capital gain buckets. So I have added a link to the capital gains video that I did a couple weeks ago. You can check that out, which gives you all of the details on the differences, uh, the uh, holding periods, the respective tax rates, all that stuff. So all of that uh, pertains to crypto, uh, so check that video out. But how is crypto treated? Well, like I just mentioned, it is going to be a capital gain just like a stock. Your holding period is going to dictate whether it's short term or long term, and thus also the tax rate that you are going to pay on any pr prospective gains that you have in said cryptocurrency. That's pretty easy. Uh, one of the interesting questions and topics that I've had to look into, talk to some CPA friends of mine about was the uh, purchasing of goods or services using crypto that's appreciated. So let's say you bought 500 bucks worth of crypto and it's gone up to 2000 or whatever it is. Uh, and then all of a sudden you have a good or service online that you want to use part of your crypto or all of your crypto to buy. Well, how does that work? Folks, that is a taxable event. So even though you're not selling it and realizing a gain, uh, because you have a paper gain and then you transact in it to purchase something with the appreciated asset, in this case, the cryptocurrency, that is going to be taxable. It's a uh, very muddled uh, field right now. There's a, a gray area is an understatement for this tax reporting, but the uh, rest assured the IRS and uh, regulators are checking in and trying to make sure they're staying ahead of the game. They've been in talks with various exchanges, PayPal, Coinbase, to determine you know what's the best reporting system and reporting structure for uh, people to report their transactions and their gains and losses. It's probably a good strategy for you if you are involved in cryptocurrency to make sure you're tracking the price that you pay, your cost basis, and also the price that you sell at or the prevailing price of that currency on the day that you use it to buy something. So if you bought something with Bitcoin, yes, you didn't sell it at a particular price, but what was the price of Bitcoin that day that you bought something? That is what you're gonna need to know uh, when you eventually do the tax reporting for this. Again, okay, that was uh, our crypto. I want to also follow up the capital gains with a quick topic here, the wash sale rule. Uh, wash sale is a nuanced topic. It's not brought up a lot, but if you are an active trader in a taxable account, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, the wash sale simply is when you sell a stock at a loss and you purchase that same stock or substantially identical stock within 30 days of that sale, you are not allowed to report that as a capital loss. It is disallowed. Let me throw up this slide here as a quick example. So you're buying a stock, 100 shares at $50 a share, and it goes down to 40. You're done with the stock. You said, all right, I'm good. I'm going to take my loss. That's a $1,000 loss that you realize because you sold the stock. However, a couple weeks later on May 15th, as you can see here in the example, it's 15 days later, something happens in the stock and it craters again to 30. And and you did a little bit more homework and you say to yourself, all right, this value is too good to pass up. I'm gonna buy 200 shares at 30 now. Keep in mind, this is only 15 days after you sold it. So that $1,000 loss is now disallowed. You've triggered the wash sale rule. However, how does this work? Well, you can't claim the loss, but that uh, $1,000 loss that you had gets added to your new cost basis. So instead of 6,000 of cost basis, you now have $7,000 in cost basis in this particular example. So while it's unfortunate that you can't claim the loss, you are able to add it to your cost basis. So now you have a higher cost basis, which means the stock would have to go that much 
higher in the future for you to pay capital gains on that position. Kind of boring stuff, I'll admit it, but it's important, it's related to capital gains, that's what we're doing uh, in this series of videos. So uh, if you have questions about it, if um, you know, you've know you done some transactions you want some clarity about, just drop us an email. We'll be happy to get back with you on that. Thanks for your time on this video. I am going to do a, another series three round for this uh, stocks and capital gains and, and related taxes. We're gonna focus on the tax loss harvest strategy and the tax loss carry forward. Uh, at some point you can uh, deduct, possibly deduct capital losses from income. So stay tuned for that video, super, super important. I think a lot more exciting than the wash sale. Thanks everybody for the time and we'll see you for round three.